Protests continue in Myanmar, also known as Burma, following the military coup earlier this year. And one town villagers began before dawn with songs and candles. They then marched down rural roads to protest the takeover. Protests began back in February, soon after the military seized power. Since then, nearly 600 demonstrators have been killed. Joining us now to talk more about the situation there is Eric Patterson, vice president of the Religious Freedom Institute. Eric, thank you so much for joining us. Great to be with you. Um, for those who may not recall, remind us how and why did this military takeover begin? Well, military rule is nothing new in Burma. They've had military rule off and on since 1962 and then elections in 2011. But uh, there were elections last fall, and the military stepped in very strongly uh, on February 1st and essentially has clamped down on the country with all of the violence that you just mentioned. It's, it's deplorable. Yeah, and what's the status uh, of the government leaders who were in place before this coup took place? Where are they now? What do we know? The civilian leaders are largely under house arrest, and it's a very confusing situation. Their lawyers will get uh, phone calls from unmarked numbers ordering them to be in such and such a place for a court date, and they're being shuffled around. Uh, many of the rest of us on the outside or even leaders there in the country aren't sure in which house or which jail certain civilian leaders are being held. The regime there is claiming that it's doing this in the interest of national unity and national security, but it's clearly a blow to civilian government. And we understand there also have been some developments uh, regarding the Myanmar ambassador in the United Kingdom who has spoken out against the military takeover. What exactly can you tell us about that? In a truly remarkable uh, set of events, the ambassador to the United Kingdom has, over a period of time, been supportive of civilian government and of the protests. And so he was locked out today from being able to return to work. The deputy ambassador took control. The military ordered him to lock out the current ambassador. And so he has been standing out in the street in tennis shoes and a coat and talking to the media, the global press, uh, about the horrible things that are going on in his country. He's one of many people who's a witness to the suffering and to the heavy-handed tactics of this military regime. Another thing I want to talk about is the role uh, the Catholic Church and faith leaders are playing in the protests. There was that now famous picture, I'm sure you recall, of a religious sister standing up to soldiers. Can you talk about that? Yes. The people of all faiths, but in particular Christians and Catholics in the country, have, have played a vital role. Uh, one of the things that's amazing is to see Catholic laity and Catholic religious orders with the Hunger Games symbol, which has become the symbol of the democratic protests, or with signs just calling for the golden rule or for Christ's love to be exercised here. The local cardinal, Cardinal Beau, has issued a number of statements, but it's really been citizens in the streets kneeling in prayer, kneeling in front of the military to try to stop them from harming their fellow citizens, uh, bringing food and water to the protesters, and calling on the government to stop literally massacring its own citizens. Eric, before I let you go, has there been any response that we know of from the Biden administration? And what do you think the U.S. and other countries should do? Well, the Biden administration did impose some minor sanctions on some key Burmese officials. Uh, but they're playing a bit of catch up. The Obama administration prematurely got rid of many sanctions back in 2015. Uh, the Trump administration did impose sanctions on specific high-ranking leaders uh, three years ago. But here's what should be done. First, we need to do economic statecraft with some of the countries with high levels of investment there. Countries like Japan, Singapore, and of course, China. Some of these are our close allies. They need to divest or stop the payments to this regime. This is a regime that has a military that's tightly wound into its economics, owning ports and businesses. So going after those assets is one way to do economic statecraft. And of course, we should label the activities against the Rohingya Muslims in the west of the country as genocide and bring the full power 
of the international community uh, diplomatically to stop that crisis as well. Well, Eric, we have to leave it right there. Thank you so much for your time today. Eric Patterson, Vice President of the Religious Freedom Institute. Thank you again. My pleasure. Thank you.